Hey Floss2, welcome to Creative One Studio. Hey guys, it's good to be back. <laughs> well, I missed a floss tube, but I had the new release video, so I was around. As you can tell, I was very busy. Um, well, I wanted to just, first of all, thank everybody for the well wishes and just all the kind words and ask, you know, prayers and hoping that I feel better. I feel so much better. I'm, you know, you probably could tell from my new release video, I'm back. Like, I feel good. We eased our way into it. You know, um, it was really hard on my mom to not be able to be around me and and not to be able to, you know, give me a hug or whatnot. And so we ended up, like, having, it was, we had a few nice days where it wasn't ridiculously hot. So anyway, we um, had a cookout a week ago Sunday. And we you know, stayed outside and the same thing Monday we ate outside and then by Tuesday it had been you know two full weeks and I thought okay we're good and you know so everything's back to normal which feels really really good I wanted to also start out with talking about how you know I was telling you that stress and it, when I let things get to me that's when I get ill because it's not like anything has changed. I have just as much work to do as I did before I got sick, but I was letting it get to me. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that because it's not that I work a lot because I always work a lot. I have worked 10 hour days, six days a week. <laughs> you know, Well, actually, now that we watch the grandkids, um, it's more like it's five days a week, but it's, it's you know, 11, 12 hour days, but it's, I've always worked hard. I've always worked a lot of hours. Um, but there's, there's times when I let it get to me and I get overwhelmed because I'm worrying about it. And that's when I get, you know, I usually end up getting sick. So anyway, okay. So we had the grandkids for, you know, the last couple of Thursdays and I'll insert some, some pictures, but the stories get more and more funny as they get older. Those two are the dynamic duo and are full of mischief. And uh, so not this week, but last week, <laughs> I was changing Easton's diaper and Bree was gonna be there after work, like in maybe a half an hour or so. And I said, oh, your mama's gonna be here soon. You're gonna, you're gonna go home with mommy. I said, I'm gonna miss you. And I acted like I was crying. I'm like, hoo, 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 and he's laughing. And he's like, don't cry, don't cry, grandma. It was so cute. So then when Brianna got there, they, my mom said my brother and I did this too, but like change and they just get wild and crazy and more mischievous. It's, it's funny. And Brie always says it's cause I'm here. And it's so true. <laughs> it's so funny. But he come up to me and he goes, um, mama's here. I'm going to leave you now. Cry. And so I was like, Oh, you're leaving me. And he just laughed. Like he didn't say, don't cry grandma. He was just like, ha ha ha. I'm leaving you now. He just kept running by me. I'm leaving you now. It was hilarious. And then yesterday, God, my heart starts fluttering when I think about it. We have a gate that closes off our basement to, to go downstairs. The, where else does the basement go? Anyways, um, there's also a gate at the bottom because when we need the dogs down there, if they're up by the gate on the stairs, I'm afraid they're going to fall down the stairs and plus they bark more when they're up there. So if we put a gate at the bottom of the stairs, the dogs stay downstairs and lay down and everyone's calm. But then we have the gate at the top of the stairs for the kids. Well, Bree was there getting ready to pick the kids up and well, 
there to pick up the kids and you know she always stays and visits for a while and stuff and I love it well all of a sudden I just happen like you just they're here one second and gone the next I mean we're not talking like five minutes had gone by and I happened to get up to go get something and I looked and Easton is on the other side of the gate standing two steps down I didn't want to like yell and scare him and have him fall. So I'm just like, oh my goodness, Easton, what are you doing? And I, but inside I'm like, <laughs> and I grab him and I pull him, oh my gosh. So now I know he can climb over the gates. Oh, and then the little stinkers were, they're supposed to be taking a nap. Well, my mom and Jerry, their trailer has been having issues with the air conditioning and it has been 90 degrees here and so ridiculously humid it's been horrible and their trailer just won't stay cool so we said move back up to the house I mean we have a spare room and it's the, actually the nicest room in the house so I'm like come back up Kevin and I both finally convinced him to come back up so anyway um usually that's the room I put the pack and play in for Easton to sleep well anyway so I put that in our bedroom and then I had her little cot laying there and I thought well I'm gonna give it a shot if 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 they you know because with them being together i just knew they'd be mischievous but i thought well i'm gonna give it a chance and i told them i said if you guys are horsing around in here i'm gonna have to separate you well you know i'd hear him messing around i'd go and i'm like okay get, you know he would get out of his pack and play and there it was crazy finally i said this is it if you get out of the pack and play again i'm separating you and so I go out, I go out and I'm sitting on the couch and all of a sudden I, at the corner of my eye, I see something and I look, they got out my slider door and were out on the deck. So we, we lock our doors and we have, we take this piece of wood and put it in the crack so that, um, even if they unlocked it, they couldn't unslide, they couldn't slide it. But they figured that out too. So yeah, they're outside. So anyways, I put him in the pack and play. And then I took her, I put her on the couch. And of course, she did not take a nap because she was out there with, and I had floss tube on to try to bore her to sleep. Because what kid that age is going to watch floss tube? And uh, no, and she, anyways, that was yesterday. It was, it was craziness. Um, and then Kevin had a gig. It's his last gig of the summer. And so he had to leave like around two. And so it was just mom and I at the house with the kids. And it, I mean, it, it's not that bad. I'm not making it sound like it's that horrible. It's just, it's just active. And you are constantly doing stuff and chasing kids. And uh, <laughs> I need to start working out. That's something I decided to do too, because I used to be a workout fanatic, like not, not fanatic, like three times a day or for three hours or something like that. But I mean, I worked out six days a week for many, 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 many years. And I got so lazy in 2019, 2020, and again this year. So that's almost like three years of just like not really working out much. I did a little bit in 2019. I did a little bit in 2020, 2021, and nothing, 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 nothing. And I think that that will help my stress level too is to start pumping some iron, doing some cardio. I need to just, I need to get back into working out. I can tell by the changes in my body that I've not been working out. Okay, if I had the grandkids over every single day, I'd probably be like a little rail and I'd be strong because I'm constantly lifting them. Okay, anyways. Oh, and the last thing I wanted to mention that's a, just a personal thing. My husband bought a one wheel. I don't know if you know what they are. I'll insert a picture, but yeah. And I am so nervous about it. I'm like, please don't get hurt. I can't, I can't handle it if you get hurt. Just don't get hurt. <laughs> I, I've said more about it to him, but you don't want to hear that. Okay, so I have some announcements I want to make. First thing is, da -da -da, the bear calendar is in. Okay guys, so I've had many people email me, message me on Etsy, 
anywhere they can contact me asking, are you going to sell the bear calendar? Because normally I put it on my Etsy shop in the spring and I take pre-orders. But see, because of COVID, they Legacy is never sure when they're going to get the calendars. Okay, so last year the calendars came so late and all these people pre-ordered like months earlier. So I used to get them in about July. Used to get them in around July, like the first part of July. And last year they didn't come until late August. So, um, which is about when this one came. I mean, I, they just came yesterday. So anyways, I didn't want to pre-order because I thought, gosh, if this happens again, I don't want to sit on people's money. I don't like doing that. But then I thought, I'm a little nervous about not having them on pre-order because people might order them from someone else. And I ordered a lot more than I normally do because I run out every year and there's always people towards the end of the year that go, oh my gosh, I forgot to order my calendar. Can I still get one? And then by then I can't get any more. Once I sell out and once they sell out, which they always do every year, they're not going to reprint it. So anyways, just a heads up. This is what I'm doing. I am going to take pre-orders this time because, I, like I said, I'm getting too many messages of people saying, are you going to sell your calendar? When's your calendar available? Blah, blah, blah. Did I miss it? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to pre-sell it. And the reason I'm saying pre-sell is because I can't ship them right now. With Needlework Expo going on, I can't. There's We're shipping orders. We're It's insane for us right now. And then... A week from Tuesday is my trip to Utah. And I have not, I feel very unprepared for it at this point. So I, and I have like two other major deadlines that I have to get done before I go to Utah. So I'm, I have too much to do to try to ship 170 of these calendars because that's how many I ordered. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and list them, tell people that um, they can pre-order and then I will be, back and shipping they will start shipping <laughs> where are we <laughs> september 24th i will start shipping them that week okay so that's the deal with that uh i will go ahead and show you i'm not going to open the calendar and show you each page but i can show you so this is obviously in january February, March, April. Look at that. That March one with the quilt locks and stuff. That's actually an older painting. Yeah, and then we got Easter. I love that cover image right here. I love that one. So anyway, just thought I would share at least that. September, October. I love November. Oh, I love that one. And then December. All right, so at least now you know what all the images are. And you can start pre-ordering that, and they'll be shipping in about three weeks. I want to talk about Fabulous Monsters. I have two more stitched and they were supposed to be part of my new releases for Needlework Expo. I ran out of time. I just ran out of time. And I know there's somebody that asked me, when are you doing, somebody emailed me and asked me, are you coming out with more Fabulous Monsters? It's been a while. I know it's been a while. Um, so what I've decided to do is when we get back from the Garden of Quilts, I'm going to release the next two, okay? It'll just be its own little release. It's just going to be those two fabulous monsters, okay? And then my next, like, fairly large release, there'll be one, two, I think there'll be four or five designs in my next big release and that is going to be like stuff will start shipping around November 1st the first week of November 
okay? That will be our last release of the year. Uh, and then I wanted to mention the Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher magazine. I have a punch needle in there for fall. That is supposed to start shipping in the next week or so. So I just wanted to let you guys know that it's coming and you get excited because, oh, the cover, I don't know if you guys saw the cover. It is amazing. And um, yeah, so that's exciting. Somebody, I, don't, I didn't write her name down and I apologize, but somebody mentioned that I should show my art and or, and or sketch of my new releases. So like next time I do a new release video, I will show the painting that inspired it or the sketch in my sketchbook that inspired it. So right now I'm going to do that. So I don't have like my fully finished pieces. I'm just going to show the cover picture because I have all of my new releases decorated and displayed in my studio and I wasn't about to go undecorate and grab everything and then have to put it all back. So I'm just showing you the cover image. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you because I thought that was a really good idea. So, and I thanked her for it. I said, that's a great idea. I appreciate that. Okay. So two in a bush was inspired by this folk art painting with the same name, two in a bush up on the housetop was inspired by it was inspired by this painting this is up on the rooftop and i really wanted to do those teeny tiny snowmen i really wanted to but the piece would have had to be huge to make those even show up good so aren't they sweet yeah, so that was the inspiration. When I was looking for that painting, I have a stack going of other pieces that I want to chart, but I'm going to share that at another time because I don't want this video to be an hour long. Okay, Cots Cotswold Fields, which looks like it's the number one seller so far. Here is my sketch. So as you can see, I changed quite a bit of it. <laughs> it originally was going to be, you know, all the sheep. And then you can see I have a note that says fish because when I was working with the verse, it mentioned fish. So I decided to change that to fish. Um, and you can see that I have a deer here which was changed to a cow. Um, this was changed to a deer. I moved the fox over, the fox and go over here. So anyways, you can see, but that was like my rough draft of how I wanted to start it. Next we have Soul Sisters. And then there is my sketch for Soul Sisters. Pretty much identical. Next we have Pumpkins and Bats. And here is, whoopsie, here is Pumpkin and Bats in my sketchbook. Hazel's Halloween Friends. Pretty much looks identical, doesn't it? Except it says October 31st and spooky in there. But I took the words out. Tis near Christmas Day. There we go. Pretty, looks pretty similar, doesn't it? 
Halloween Tuxedo Punch Needle. There we go. That's my sketch. That was part of my Whimsy 365. Uh, the sketch was done August 22nd of 2016. Some stuff I come out with has been in my sketchbook for a while. Now, uh, Folk Art Eagle. That was, that's in my most recent sketchbook. Because I have a bunch of a bunch of folk art birds in this sketchbook, and then uh, kindness is free. Yep, that's my new freebie that I gave away. Yeah, so I thought I would show that as well. All right, guys, that's that's it. That's how they come about. So they can come from a sketchbook, or they can come from a painting. I wanted to mention, um, I, if you go, I'm going to have a link below to this, but if you go to my website, oh, hold on one second. Hey guys, if you go to my website, I'll have a link below. I show the back cover of each of my patterns, my new releases, so that you can order the thread and the linen for the piece so that when you get your pattern you'll be ready to stitch it. I wanted to let you guys know that's something I want to start doing from now on to help you guys out. Alright, I have a few questions from the last two videos I released. I released. That's just on my mind now <laughs> that I posted. Rebecca Sewing, she asked, when will, when will your fabric line be available? So for the love of nature is going to be shipping this fall. So I tried to, my internet is so horrible right now, and I tried to go to the Riley Blake Designs uh, website and see if they had any updates on when that would ship. And I couldn't get to their website because I'm telling you, our, I need a new extender for my studio. It's been horrible, guys, and it's really put a damper on me getting stuff done. But anyways, so I'll, I'll put a link below. I need to write that down. So you guys, you can go to Riley Blake Designs website and look for yourself just to see because they have a page called coming soon and I'm guessing that by now they'll have a more accurate date. Joanne Beaudry she asked the soda stitcher showed a Halloween sampler for Patreon will that be in a book available at market next year? Yes ma'am it will. As I've mentioned before, the Patreon designs that I give to the patrons, <laughs> they will eventually be available to the public. Maybe not 100% of them, but most of them will be. So I started Patreon October 2020. So everything from October 2020 to October 2021 that year span, um, then I have, I guess you could call it the freedom or whatever, to release those to the public. So I'm going to start working on the books and things like that for Nashville. So yeah, you guys, the Halloween sampler, I can't wait to see it stitched. I have actually sent that out to a model stitcher because uh, I need I need it fully stitched for the cover of the book and whatnot. So anyways, okay, I don't know why I brought that up. Joanne, no, 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 not Joanne. I just did that one. Lisa Buckingham asks, can you tell us more about your primitive folk days? Lisa, I can and I will. <laughs> I can't say when. I, for, since I started Floss Tube, which I'm in my thir third year, I have wanted to do a video like a biography type video where I explain my career and how one thing led to another and how I got to where I'm at today that I want to do that so bad but I responded to her message and I just told her that the reason I haven't done it is because I don't want to 
just be sitting here telling you guys about it. I want to show pictures of, you know, the art that I did back then. I want to show you guys the catalogs that we used to make. Like we used to make full color catalogs because it was before the internet, you guys. It's not like I could have a website and have everything pictured there. No, you had to give a catalog full color. It was expensive and it, and it was nerve wracking because sometimes they had to ship them to the show because they wouldn't get them printed in time. Oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> There's, I have so many stories, so many fun stories to share with you guys about those days. Um, and I have tons of pictures and I want to have pictures of, we had this little retail store. I have all kinds of things I want to share about that. That will be a very long video, and but it will be interesting. I want to make it interesting and full of imagery for you guys. So it's going to be a big undertaking, but I told her, you know, in the winter, I'm going to be super busy, but uh, I'm going to, as I'm cleaning my studio and moving things around, I'm just going to start making a file of photos and different things that have to do with those days. So anyways, it's coming, but it might be, you know, six to nine months before I get it done. And I, and I think it'll be nice to have, um, for my children, you know, and my grandkids to see, you know, how Kevin and I built the business and how we just, how God really led us through it because the stuff that happened, I, I would have never dreamed would have happened. You know what I mean? It's just very interesting. All right, guys. So whips. Uh, the first whip I want to show you is for CW Live. We started this on Tuesday. It's called Folk Art. And we just have our first layer of paint on. So it's very rudimentary, I guess you could say. But um, we'll finish that up this coming Tuesday. Also, I gotta show you the chair I'm working on. I'm make a little room on this table here. If you guys remember the chair that I made for it's called the charity auction it's a fundraiser and people from all over the area make chairs and they have this big dinner and they auction off these chairs I'm gonna insert pictures of the chair I made last time now the last one I made was in 2019 because 2020 they didn't have the auction dinner because of COVID. So also, I don't know if you guys remember a while back, I painted Mary and Jesus, but first I covered the canvas with these printed missiles that we, you know, cause we couldn't use our missiles during COVID. So each week in 2020 and part of the early part of 2021, we had these, whoops, um, you know, it had all the prayers and all the songs and things we were gonna do for that mass. Well, I saved them all, and this is just part of the stack. So what I did with that Mary and Jesus painting is I covered the canvas, decoupaged these on there. I tore the paper, and it's got prayers in it, and all, pictures and all kinds of things. So that's what I'm doing to the chair. I am covering the chair. I mean, I got a little picture of Jesus here, whoops, right here, and I've got a little picture of Jesus here, and I've got the back of the chair, let me hold it sideways, I have the back of the chair almost done, but I got to cover this whole chair, and then I'm painting an angel here, and then I'm going to, I don't know what all I'm going to paint on it, and it's, <laughs> the auction dinner is mid September, but she was hoping I could get it to her by the end of August so they could use it for advertising and commercials and things like that. 
I don't know that I'm going to make that deadline. I will definitely have the chair done for the charity auction, but the end of August would be like Tuesday and that ain't happening. So hold on. Mom's here. Aw, my mom. Oh my gosh. I just love and adore her. Okay. Then, um, whoops. I have three starts, y'all. Three starts since my last pause too. Can you believe it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you this one I have the least amount done on first. So here's my first one, Barbara Anna Designs, All Creatures Great and Small. I know you've seen this pattern because a lot of people have stitched it. I'm stitching it on the called for fabric, what is it, um, vintage country mocha 40 count, but I'm using all silks, which is a silk conversion. This is all I have done. It's a silk conversion that um, Janine from Acorns and Threads did for me. So I'm starting in, I'm going, what I decide to do is go page by page. So basically I've got teeny tiny bit done here and like this is the first page type of thing so anyway that's my minuscule start but I'm just happy to have it started I planned on working on it a little bit more this week so what I do is I stitch in the morning that is the only time of the day I can stitch so I might stitch an hour I might stitch it you know two hours but it's usually no more than that Okay, and then the second one that I started, I'm actually showing you them in the reverse of how I started them. <laughs> I started um, All Creatures last. This is my second start. So this is Sally Emerson. This is not a reproduction of an antique. I, I searched that name to make sure there was no um, charts out there with that name on it. But I just wanted to have an original design, but I wanted it to have like this. I just wanted it to have that feel of an antique. So correct me if I'm wrong. If Sally Emerson is a design out there already, let me know. Because I am eventually going to release this in a book with a large sampler and then a smaller piece. Um, and I don't want to step on anyone's toes, so... Anyways, I will show, so that was a Patreon. <laughs> I guess I should have said that. That is a Patreon uh, design, but it will be released at market in 2020 in March. So I have A through H done. I'm starting to change color here. Whoops, A through H is done. And then I'm going into this gold color. So I'm stitching this on um, Grandma Slip 40 count XU designs. And I love how it's coming along. I love her fabric. I do find, though, that the holes are a little bit, like, tighter together. It must have something to do with her dyeing process. So I struggle a little bit to, to not, I'm not knowing if I'm going in the right hole or not type of thing. So this, uh, the vintage country mocha that I'm stitching on for All Creatures Great and Small, that is a dream. That is a dream. I could stitch on that all day long for every single pattern. <laughs> all right. The one I have the most progress on, and it was the one I started first, is the um, Kindness is Free that I gave away. It's a free chart. If you guys want it, just go. I'll have a link below, but it's on my website. I do want to mention that when you get to the page, It'll show a picture of this, and underneath it says click here to download the PDF. You click on that, and then you can print it off, okay? That's just the way my website is set up. So anyways, I am stitching this on Picture This Plus Bramble, which is, oh, I love it. But this is a 32 count, and I don't like stitching with two threads. This, no. If... I wish I would have had Bramble and 40 count because I would have done that all day long. But I love stitching on this fabric. It's it's great. But again, 
the two threads is driving me crazy. But this is how much I have done. I did do a couple color changes. I changed her skin tone to Weeks Dye Works Sand, which is 3500 And then, <laughs> you know, I designed it, but I changed it anyways. So the dark blue looks great. The lighter shade of blue that I chose to go, you know, to fill in all these white areas was too similar in color and it was not showing up enough for me. So I switched it out for Weeks Dye Works Dove. And I love that it's showing the pattern better than had I used the other color. So those are the two changes I've made. Oh yeah, there was a, and there's a mistake on the chart. I mean, let's see. Yeah, so this line right here, the line above it, there was an extra stitch that needs to be removed. And then that same line, the one below it, it shows four X's. It's one of those X's is supposed to be a one. That very first stitch is supposed to be a one and not an X. However, if you stitched it the way it's shown, it's probably not even gonna show. But it was driving me nuts, I had to fix it. <laughs> So I will, oh, I'll try to remember to put that on the website um, where you have to go to download this. But yeah, I'll try to remember, guys. It's hard for me to get everything done because there's just so much to do. So yeah, those are my three stitching whips. And I never dreamed I would have three projects going at the same time. I really didn't. Oh, part of my thread. put that back in there so for fully finishes I had a bunch but it was for Needlework Expo and so you've already seen them I'll have a link below if you have not seen my video for the new releases uh, you can just look in the description box and it, you can just easily find it that way I have two paintings that I want to show you really quickly that um, are finished hold on one second if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this, but I have changed it. This is one of our, this is our CW Live lesson. Basically, that's Hazel and her Halloween friends that the cross stitch I just released. Um, but anyway, this is what it looks like as a painting. And I've lightened, just today I lightened the background because the gray was too dark and she just wasn't popping and quite frankly nothing was popping it looked okay up close but when I had it further away it just all was like the same value and nothing was popping so just today like I said I just went over it with a lighter shade of gray and I love how it looks now and my favorite part is that moon I love his face so cute so yeah hazel's halloween friends done in acrylic painting so this next piece i'm going to show you was done for a client i'm not going to tell you who and i'm not going to tell you what it was for all i can tell you is i love it so much so it's a winter scene with these two folk art cardinals Stitching warms my heart with the two houses. And I love that big garland. Snow on the houses, I love it. So yeah, the two birds are standing on a hoop that says stitching warms my heart. And one of them is holding the needle and the other one is holding the thread. And I just think it turned out so <laughs> cute. I didn't put matte varnish on it yet. That's why it's kind of glossy, but um, never fear. I will be definitely putting matte varnish on because I don't like glossy stuff. So anyway, that was what I worked on last Saturday. And then, I was telling you I had that 12-hour day. I painted that, and then I did the rest of my fully finishing for the new releases. So that was a really long day. All right, that's it for fully finishes. So now I want to share with you some... Uh, wonderful stitchers that sent in their projects 
and um, we'll just check those out right now. There were a couple of questions from PLOS Tube 127 that I did not address, so I'm just going to go over those real quick. I don't have her name. <laughs> But she asked if my watercolor class that's going to be at Garden of Quilts is for a beginner and what supplies do you need to bring? All supplies will be included in the fee for the class. I supply the little watercolor um, tray, the brushes that comes with it. We'll have tubs for water. And you know, you might want to bring an apron to cover your clothes if you're like crazy. You want to get really into the paint <laughs> so you don't ruin your clothes. But for the most part, we're not using acrylic. It's watercolor. It's pretty chill. You can be a beginner because I'm going to have... That's right. i got to do that. Oh, my gosh. It just dawned on me. I need to write that down. I'm going to have the image already drawn on your watercolor paper for you. Because otherwise, I thought, how is everybody going to trace that if I have, you know, two light tables? I just thought it'd be better if I had them traced because the classes aren't, it's not a huge size class. So to draw that many, I could do it pretty quickly. So anyway, I just kind of remember to do it. Um, so, so yeah, beginners welcome. I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty easy. I don't, yeah, it's going to be fun. Let's just say it's going to be fun. Okay. Wasn't there another, I think there was another question. One second. And then somebody asked where to purchase the tile. Uh, I have a link to that. I think we bought that. We bought two of them at Walmart when we were in Utah. Ryan gave me the first one for Christmas, so I'm not sure where he bought that. But I know you can get them on Amazon, so I'll have a link to wherever I can find them for you. That I can't remember who asked that either, so my bad. <laughs> first, we have Becca from Sambri Stitches. Ah! She finished Land That I Love. That's so awesome. She said, I finished your amazing Land That I Love pattern up on Mount St. Helens on August 7th, 2021. This was a 4th of July 2020 start. It's stitched on 18 count Homeland from B Stitch Me, and I used the called for floss, except I subbed Classic Color Works used brick for DMC 377. I loved every stitch. Thank you so much. Becca, I so appreciate you sending that to me, and most of you know her. She has a floss tube channel of her own, so you need to go check her out. Um, she does the interview with the floss tuber, and it is amazing. Next, we have Linda Feistola. I'm sure I didn't say that right, so my apologies. She finished Daydream Believer. This was a Patreon chart. So it will be released at market March of 2022. She said, hi, Teresa. I finished this chart for one of my daughters. I love the colors and the chart. I used onion skin dyed eight, I'm sorry, 16 count Ada. I love the way it turned out. So thank you so much, Linda, for sharing that with us. Next we have, I don't know how to say her name because it's like it's Japanese or maybe it's Chinese but her, her Instagram is matchasan0324 and she stitched kindness is free she got it done in record time she got it done a week after I released that pattern so that's pretty amazing I wish I knew if she used the called for threads. I think she did. It looks like she did. So thank you so much for sending that in. I love it. And then we have the Traveling Viking Mama on Instagram. She stitched Tis a Merry Halloween. And she also stitched Halloween Greetings. I'm going to read what she wrote here. The frame for Tis Merry Halloween came from Walmart. I got mine last year, but they're back in stock this year. And she has a link, so I'll have that linked below. She said the ribbon came from Hobby Lobby. 
the candy corn and etc. came from Michael's and also the square finishing pumpkin for Halloween greetings. The finishing fabric for both pieces is Priscilla's Pretty Plaids. She did a beautiful job stitching and finishing those two pieces. So thank you so much, the traveling Viking mama. I don't know what your real name is, but I really appreciate you letting me share that on Floss Tube. And last but definitely not least, Tara Guernsey. Now Tara is an avid and very quick punch needler. <laughs> she does a gorgeous job. Tara said, I used a variety of threads in this piece using three strands. I even used some of the Sparkle DMC threads to give the piece a little bit of shimmer. I punched the edge at a higher pile to give it a fringed edge. Hand stitched an orange felted wool to the back and made it into a pillow with sawdust and potpourri granules. What else she did but she didn't mention is she used buttons for the eyes on the pumpkin which is absolutely incredible. So I am definitely going to be trying to make that fringe around the edge because I, when I looked at the picture I'm like how on earth did she do that? That looks amazing. So all she did was use her ultra punch and probably put it on the highest setting and it makes long loops. You're going to use a ton of floss, but if you use DMC and you take three different colors, like she's got orange and green in there, you could do, and I think a yellow, but if you just took one strand of each of those and then punched it with the three different strands all together, you would get that fringe look. And I, I've never seen that done before. And so Tara, bravo. I love it. I had a couple more people that sent in things to be shown. And so my apologies, you will be in the next floss tube. Again, I could not get the, the information printed out. Internet issues. I tell you what, I love where I live, but I seriously would be willing to move just to have good internet. <laughs> because it slows my work down tremendously when I can't use the internet in my studio. It's just so frustrating. I just want to talk real quick about plans. So here are my plans just to get through the weekend with Needlework Expo. Kevin will be shipping orders out uh, starting Monday. I will be working on my taxes <laughs> um, in the mornings and in the evenings until I get them done because I have to have those done and out the door this coming Tuesday to give my accountant enough time to get the stuff done. Then I will be working on the chair for the charity auction. Then I will be working towards everything that I need to do for Utah. Now, I, I'm going, okay, I'm going to make a couple videos. I won't be sharing them here on my floss tube channel until I get back from Utah, but I'm teaching a beginner watercolor class, but I'm also teaching a beginner cross-stitch class. Uh, as a beginner, there are so many terms that people use on floss tube that will just leave one pondering <laughs> and distracted trying to figure the acronym out. So I, with the help of my uh, patrons, we came up with a very thorough and very, very, very long list of different words and terms that are used in the cross-stitch marketplace or whatever, what have you, however you want to word that, that I am going to, you know, have this printout that I'm going to give to everybody, but I'm also going to make a video. And so the video is going to be fairly long because I want to show some little clips. Like if there's something that needs to be explained a little bit better than just FFO means fully finished object, okay? But if you're talking about lacing, maybe I can insert a little clip of what lacing looks like, you know, just stuff like that. I want to be real thorough with it, and I want to give that video and paper to the people that come to my cross-stitch class in Utah. They get first dibs on that. But when I get back, I will have a downloadable PDF where you can print out what I gave to them, and then also the video will come later. Okay. The other video I'm making is 
about samplers. And I, <laughs> I have recently, I mean, it was a little while back because I've had so many deadlines lately that I haven't had time to work on it. But I started making a handout about samplers and I want to talk about samplers a bit with them because that's where it all started. You know, that's where cross stitch started was, you know, way back when and you know, the marking samplers, band samplers, and just how it changed over the years. So I'm also going to be doing a video talking about samplers. Now, listen, I know I don't know as much about samplers as other people do. But since I'm teaching a beginner cross-stitch class, I feel like I need to share as much information as I can with them. And I'm going to have links, um, web pages that they can go to, to watch videos of people that are way more uh, informed and educated about samplers than I. So I'm just going to give them the basis of, you know, like what does a peacock mean that if you see a peacock in a sampler, you know, what does that mean? There's a lot of symbolism that goes into samplers. So anyway, I'm working on those. So that has to be done before I leave. So <laughs> it is so busy and crazy getting all these things done. And then when I return from Utah, I am working on, I'm going to start working on, right now I'm just kind of in, in planning stages, but I have downloaded a program on how to design quilts. Ah, <sighs> yeah. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I am going to release, or, or I'm going to develop a book for each fabric line that comes out. Now, I won't have one for uh, the first one, for the love of nature, because when, by the time I signed with Riley Blake Designs, I was under the gun to get that first line done, and it had, you know, I was way past the deadline because they just wanted to get me into the rotation type of thing. Not only that, I didn't have this brainiac idea back then. Anyways, this idea came to me fairly recent, I would say maybe three weeks ago where I want to come out with a book and the book will come out just before the fabric starts shipping to the shops. So the only unfortunate part about these kind of books is it's there's going to be a very like this is the deadline. This is the last day I can, you know, have this done. So my lips are so dry. So the book is going to have a couple of quilt projects in it. It's going to have a cross stitch or two projects in it. It's going to have a punch needle project. It's going to have a wool applique project and it is going to have um, hopefully a hooked rug project or a punched rug. So it's going to be a project book and it's going to be uh, based around the fabric line, whatever that theme may be. So all of you know, oh by the way, I can write that down. Ah, sorry. Okay. So my next one to be released, or my next fabric line to be released, is going to come out in the spring. It's called Halloween Whimsy. You can go to my website. I'm going to have a link below. And every time... I get the full PDF that shows every single SKU that's going to be in that line. I'm going to put it on my website. So if you ever want to know what my fabric line is all about, what it looks like, what my inspiration is, blah, 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 you can find it on my website. Okay, I'm going to have a link for you. So if you go to my website, it basically says our Riley Blake design fabric lines or something like that. So, if, you know, it's easy to find. It's right up there in the top in the menu bar. Okay, so for Whimsy Halloween, that's the first one I'm attempting to do this book on. Now that comes out in the spring, y'all. Guess what else, comes, what else comes out in the spring? A million patterns in, in sampler books and things for Nashville Market. So <laughs> this winter is going to be crazy. So the good part is, you know, I have wonderful model stitchers that will do the cross stitch for me. I will do the punch needle. I have someone lined up to do the wool applique I showed you. You know, I met her at the Silver Needle Retreat 
and she showed me her work and it's exquisite. And then um, I already have two beautiful ladies lined up that will do the quilts for me. Um, so I have people lined up to help with the projects, but I have to design the projects first. So anyway, Whimsy Halloween, you can see the whole line on my website. And all of the projects that will be in the Halloween Whimsy, Whimsy Halloween, Whimsy Halloween, Halloween Whimsy, it's Halloween Whimsy. I always want to flip flop them. Halloween Whimsy book, basically pieces from that fabric line will be made into these other projects. I hope that makes sense. So I'm really excited about that. I'm nervous. I have a ghostwriter lined up that's going to write all the instructions on how to make the quilts because I don't know how to do that. I, I really don't. I, I can design stuff all day long, <laughs> but writing the instructions, especially for something like that, no, no, no. So I'm blessed that um, Riley Blake Designs helped me out and hooked me up with a ghostwriter. So that is my plans. My plans is also to just continue to stitch at least an hour every single morning and get these projects done. You know, slowly but surely I'm making headway and, and I'm excited about that. Oh, I didn't go over haul. Haul. Look what I got. So I I have a nice iron up at the house. Kevin got it for me for Christmas. I know I don't mind practical gifts. I really don't because I'm not a real like bling bling jewelry person and I don't need expensive purses and things like that. So I don't mind getting a vacuum for Mother's Day, which that happened to. Uh, I don't mind those gifts because if it makes my life easier, I'm all for it. <laughs> it was pretty funny though because for Christmas I got an iron... I got a panini maker from Ryan. I mean, I got like such practical gifts. I just I thought it was awesome. <laughs> but I bought that wool mat from Primitive Gatherings for ironing down here at the studio. When I start to do my wool applique and all of that stuff, I, and I'm going to get my sewing machine set up down here and everything. Well, I don't have an iron down here. And it drove me crazy because I have to, I iron all of my cross stitch too. So I usually iron it at the house and bring it down here. Half the time I'd bring it down here and go, crap, I forgot to iron it. And then I have to take it back up there. It was a pain in the butt. So anyway, I bought this iron and I absolutely love it. I haven't used it yet. I'm super excited though. It has a handle in this little carrying case. It's so cool. It's Panasonic. I did, I did my research. I went to primitive gatherings first but the one they have is like four hundred dollars i'm like i didn't spend that much on but that is intended for somebody that uses it you know eight to ten hours a day and that's you know makes sense but what i love about this is okay so it has this cord and it's retractable and it has this base so like if i took it like if i did a uh, some sort of retreat or something and I needed to bring an iron with me, you know, plugs are sometimes an issue at these retreats and stuff. Well, this is removable. And I guess I haven't tried it yet, but I found it on, I was just a bunch of research basically. And when it is in here, it, it heats up, you can take it over to your table and iron and do what you need to do. And then in between you put it back on there and it heats up, I guess, like super fast. Um, and I love that it's ceramic bottom. And so they were saying that, you know, how things can kind of gum up on the stainless steel, supposedly on the ceramic, it won't do that as much, but I love that it's not square at the bottom. So it just makes it easier to iron with for projects. I like that it's small and it's lightweight. Also, I don't know how to do it, but to fill up the water somehow, Maybe you push that. Somehow it comes apart and you can take it over to the sink or wherever you, I guess you're not supposed to use that kind of water, but whatever. <laughs> I need to read the instructions on this baby so I don't ruin it, but I'm so excited to have this down here at the studio. And I love that it's very portable too. And then my other haul, I bought two antique samplers last Saturday on eBay while I was doing all the other crap I was doing. But one of them, this is terrible. One is still in the box. I haven't even had time. I have three boxes sitting here. that have, One of them have been here like for two weeks. I've never opened it. I can't even remember what's in it. 
and then I got that sampler that arrived I think Tuesday and I haven't opened it yet but because it's a huge one it's a huge box it's a huge sampler and I can't wait to see it well evidently I can because I haven't like raced down here to open it but um actually I think it came Wednesday it came Wednesday and and then the grandkids came Thursday, so I'm like, I got to get that out of here. It's just a big box. Anyway, this one came as well. I won this bid. And I just love how primitive these colors are. I love this. So I'm going to do some research on it, and hopefully you will see this charted. I, I want to find linen that matches that really closely. It's just these, like, two little lovebirds in the center. It's just so cute and it's kind of I don't know it's just antique looking and I think it's beautiful so I can't wait to chart that I mean that's part of my plans too of course is to chart what I I think I told you I had five so now I have seven antique samplers that I need to chart so life is full life is busy it's very exciting though Hey everyone, I'm so excited. I got something in the mail yesterday. I didn't know I had it. I didn't know it arrived yesterday because <clears throat> the box didn't get brought in. And anyways, I had which I had um, CW Live class last night and I got up to the house around 9.30 p.m. and I saw this box sitting on the chair and I'm like, what is that? And it was from Cheryl Jensen. And I knew immediately what it was because <laughs> During CW Live, Colleen was on there and she's like, did you get the package from Cheryl today? And I'm like, no. So anyway, it actually had arrived and I didn't realize it. So I am going to open this amazing gift from my two virtual BFFs, sisters, Colleen and Cheryl, stitching with the sisterlies. They are incredible. Incredible, <clears throat> talented, incredibly talented, but also incredibly generous and kind. And I'm so happy to call them friends. If you follow Colleen and Cheryl on Instagram and on um, you know their YouTube channel, Stitching with the Sisterlies, then you know that they, <clears throat> that Colleen pieced a quilt for me and then she sent it to Cheryl and Cheryl did the quilting on her long arm machine so oh look at this adorable card oh my gosh isn't that not the cutest and it's got like glitter on it wow thank you so much oh my gosh I'm stoked so who doesn't love quilts, right? If you follow me, you know every Thursday we have our grandchildren, um, Ellery and Easton. I hashtag it Thursdays with, well, it used to be Thursdays with Ellery, and then, you know, two years later came Easton. So it's Thursdays with Ellery and Easton. Every Thursday they come over. I haven't seen them in two weeks because I've been sick. But tomorrow is Thursday, and then we're going to have them, and I cannot wait to see them. So this quilt... It just means so much to me that someone would take the time. I know what, how much time it takes to make, to piece a quilt. I don't know how much time it takes to do the quilting on a long arm, but it's all a lot of work. And these ladies are so talented. And I'm just thrilled out of my mind to have something made by Colleen and Cheryl. It makes me want to cry. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful it is. You guys, look at this gorgeous quilt. I don't know if you can even see it all. Look how pretty it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Colleen, thank you so much. Cheryl, thank you so much. And um, I think it's it says, through the woods. Oh, golly, guys, I'm so emotional. Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. And it's full of winter scenes. 
So the wording is, is in this ribbon here that are on each corner, and then the flying geese are on the opposite corners. And it's just full of winter scenes. These are so my colors, as you can see from my house. <laughs> Black, you know, the mustardy, caramely colors. It's just absolutely perfection. And especially that they personalize it, you know, to grandmother's house we go. And um, I will definitely be snuggling with the grands in this quilt this winter. So I cannot thank you enough, ladies. It is quite an amazing and impressive gift. Thank you so much. I think that's it other than giveaway. Well, my internet is not working right now to try to do the giveaway, to use the YouTube random comment picker. So I did it the old fashioned way. And the winner is Dinah Alberts. Congratulations, Dinah. So you had to say stitchy or stitching. I asked you, what were you stitching? So y'all busy. And I love seeing everything everyone's stitching or hearing about it anyways. Um, and she said, great video as usual. I'm stitching antique scissors in spools by Shakespeare Peddler. Love seeing your grandkids every week. So thank you so much, Dinah. And what you won was the pattern of your choice, which will include my new releases. So if, there, if you saw something in my new releases you want, or any of my older patterns, you just all you gotta do is email me at TeresaCogat3 at gmail.com and give me your address, which I think I already have, but please just in, please put it in the email. Yeah, so just email me and I'll get that mail to you ASAP. Okay, so this week's giveaway is Beautiful U pouch. I think that is just precious. So this has the white zipper and the white. So this one I thought was interesting. I didn't realize this. But um, if you get a white zipper, then the inside is white. If you get the black zipper, then the inside is black. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I like them both. So anyway, that is the large pouch. You can see how big it is compared to my head. What I want you to tell me is, tell me what is your favorite Needlework Expo release. It doesn't have to be mine. It doesn't have to be mine. There's so many incredible designs coming out by all of the amazing designers out there. So just let me know what is your favorite Needlework Expo release and how you can do that in case you don't haven't seen them all together. If you go to Instagram and then in the search you put hashtag needlework underscore expo and you can search it that way or you can go to the i'll have a link where you can just go right to the needlework expo instagram page and scroll down through there and you can see all of what the designers are offering and it's pretty overwhelming i don't know how you all choose so that's it that's a wrap you guys um this was really long but um, it's great to just visit with you guys, and I appreciate you stopping by and visiting with me. I will record next weekend, and then I'll be off at least one week, unless I can, if I can do a floss tube while Kevin and I are traveling, I might just pop on and do a really quick one in our hotel room, or actually, we're gonna be out west. There's gonna be some beautiful scenery, so I'm gonna take all my stuff, uh, my stitching and whatnot and maybe I'll do one while I'm out there if not I will be gone for two weeks and I will be back with all kinds of fun things that happened on our trip so anyways guys thank you for your support your kind words I couldn't do this without you and don't forget create every day bye